Welcome to another video here on Debaco University. Today we're going to be looking at characteristics of common fibers, looking at both natural and synthetic fibers in this presentation. Now natural fibers, while there are many, the ones we're going to be focusing on here in this presentation are going to be wool, cotton, hemp, jute, and silk. And we can see that there are many other fibers. However, these are typically made into clothing and likely to be found and analyzed for comparison purposes. Now the wool fibers themselves are uh, typically a natural hair grown on sheep and are composed of protein substances such as keratin. Wool fibers have crimson curls which create pockets and give the wool a spongy feel and create insulation. It creates kind of that air spaces that allow it to have great insulating properties. The outer surface of the fiber consists of a series of serrated scales which overlap each other. And we can see that image here. This is a microscopic view, but they kind of look like scales of a fish. And this makes it possible for these fibers to cling together and produce felt. And this insulating factor is great here for the sheep and llamas and alpacas. Uh, they have that very similar insulating uh, property with their fibers. Going on to plant material, we're looking here at cotton. It's the most important textile fiber in the world. Cotton is a natural veget vegetable fiber and produced on the cotton plant. And it kind of looks like cotton balls on the plant. Uh, however, this is in its natural form. This would be harvested here. Cotton magnified to about 100 times. You can see some of the fibers are rather flat and looks like a ribbon when it twists. And we see that evident right here. Hemp or flax fibers, uh, they are cellulose fibers with properties that are similar and are scarily uh, differentiated at the fiber form. So this differentiation between these two, as far as identifying specifically which one that we have, uh, is complicated by the treatment process. So sometimes it can be difficult to identify whether you're looking at a flax or a hemp fiber. Now, jute fibers themselves are one of the most important and affordable natural fibers, and it's harder than other textile fibers. Typically, they're made into, for example, burlap bags uh, in jute twine because they're environmentally friendly and normally used for these kind of materials or tufts of carpet where there's a lot of structure uh, that's needed. Also, the fact that they're biodegradable is great, that they can be used outside. A lot of times, to hang up tomato plants, we use it jute twine. Keep in mind, while it is biodegradable, uh, it doesn't break down as to say very quickly and can be left in the field for a little while before it naturally over time will break down. There's also silk fibers. So silk fibers, also made of proteins, these are secreted by a caterpillar, specifically a silkworm. Uh, and they feed on selective plants and they actually spin cocoons. They form this silk as a protective shell to perpetuate their own life. Man interferes with the life cycle of the cocoon stage to obtain the silk, which is a continuous filament for commercial importance. And it can be thought of to produce very high end fibers in this case. Looking now at synthetic fibers, so rayon, acrylic, polyester, nylon, and spun glass are the ones we're going to be looking at here that fall under the synthetic fiber category. Now rayon's the first one. Here, it's, uh, rayon will absorb moisture more so than cotton. It's also breathable, uh, comfortable to wear, and easily dyed into vivid colors. This is what makes it a popular choice uh, for clothing, for example. It also doesn't build up static electricity, uh, nor will it, uh, will it develop that pilling unless the fiber is made from short, uh, low twist yarns. Rayon shares the properties similar to those of cotton. Rayon fiber itself is comfortable, soft to the skin, and it has moderate dry strength and abrasion resistance. So again, all properties that make it very favorable to made into different textiles, particularly clothing. Acrylic uh, can be thought of as artificial wool imitation. It has wool's warmth and softness, but does not absorb water, but wicks moisture to the surface where it evaporates. So that's important to note if you're looking at you know, a type of clothing or something that may have involved water. This shows an example of acrylic fiber uh, showing the melt termination in the lower right, see right, right here, uh, and the mechanical damage termination in the upper left up here. So again, we're looking at the microscope. There are ways to help identify this. Polyester. So polyester is the most commonly used synthetic fiber, often blend with other fibers like cotton to get the best kind of of both worlds. Because while polyester fibers have good elasticity and wrinkle resistance, shape retention, excellent wash and wear performance and durability, it's widely used. However, 
Polyester fibers are as poor in moisture absorption. Uh, its clothing makes the wearer feel hot and sticky, which people don't want to feel, uh, but does have a lot of other advantage properties. Uh, so as a result, this is why it can be mixed with other fibers. Um, so that polyester alone kind of produces that static electricity easily when a result of clothing, absorbing dust, clinging to the body, and has poor comfort. This is why you typically have a blend of this. Uh, but it alone, a sample of polyester fiber, sample here, polyester thread, inference colors, high order white, which can be seen here with multiple interference orders evident where the fiber cross at right angles. And we can see that evident here and here. And here we're looking at this bar would represent 50 microns if we're looking at size. Nylon uh, does not absorb water, but also means that the movement com uh, combined to create static electricity. So this is, again, something else where it may not be a pure uh, garment made only of nylon. And some of the look and feel of silk, as we can kind of see the shininess to the twine kind of here, it's made of nylon. It's used in sheer, um, it's used in sails, parachutes, uh, gowns, veils, swimsuits, uh, car tires. So it has a lot of uses, uh, different types of nylon nylon. Now also can be replace wool as the fiber used in carpets. Here's a sample of nylon fiber from a furnace um, air filter. We can kind of see how we're getting those, what it looks like when it crosses over and also the distance here. We can also get it looking at it woven here on the microscopic scale. Lastly, we have spun glass. This is one of the strongest uh, textile fibers, having the greater specific tensile strength uh, than steel wire and the same diameter at a lower weight. So just that alone speaks to its rigidity and its strength. Now, the glass uh, fabrics have excellent heat resistance with a softening point of about 1,555 degrees Fahrenheit or 846 degrees Celsius and a melting point that's very high of over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Glass fabrics are non-combustible, highly resistant to attack uh, by most chemicals and unaffected by sunlight, fungus, or bacteria. So this is great if they're going to be used in uh, areas that maybe have a lot of sunlight exposure, um, need resistance to chemicals, um, so they do have some great properties and it is very strong. However, it may not always be the case that we may need it. It has a different kind of texture or feel, and this is why some of your other fibers are more commonly found in clothing, but for specialized tasks, spun glass definitely has a purpose.